everybody, this is Anthony from VR Roundtable. Welcome to the second installment of Deep Dives. And so Deep Dives, like I was saying last time, Deep Dives gives us a chance to take particular topics in the VR industry and explore them a little bit deeper, kind of go a little bit farther into the topic and see what's going on with the topic. And so the topic that I have this time is kind of interesting. It's it's hard for me to explain this topic really. I don't like last topic was PlayStation VR tracking. Is there a problem with the tracking? Is there a problem with the controllers? It's a pretty easy topic to define. This topic is a little bit different. Basically what the topic is is it's it's less of a topic and it's more of a public service announcement. It's a PSA that is saying guess what? If you're going to jump on this VR bandwagon, you need to understand that VR is going to be a slow burn, okay? VR adoption will be a slow burn, and if you're going to jump on this VR bandwagon, you've got to be into this thing for the long haul because in the short term, it might not be the best bandwagon to jump on. And the, the thing that I have to talk about is every once in a while, I will see a thread on the HTC Vive subreddit or the PlayStation VR subreddit where somebody will say, you know what? I liked VR, but uh, I sold my headset. Maybe I'll see you guys in a number of years. You'll see a post like this. Somebody be like, yeah, you know, I had an HTC Vive. I played it for a while. I was really into it but I haven't used it in a couple of months. I've gone back to regular normal games and I sold my HTC Vive. Not that virtual reality is not gonna be a thing, but basically I'm gonna check back in on it in two years. And you know, that's, that's one strategy to take. And the thing is, is people need to understand that if you're gonna jump on this bandwagon, you have to understand that you're not going to get all the AAA games and all the killer apps that you might be accustomed to on your normal video game platforms. This VR thing is a brand new thing. You're not gonna get your Call of Duties in VR. You're not gonna get your Battlefields in VR, your Ratchet and Clanks, and your, you know, it's pretty much every game. I, how many threads do I see where when is Battlefield going to be in VR? When are we going to get Madden in VR? When are we going to get NBA 2K in VR? Everybody's expecting all this AAA high-end content in VR right away, and it's not going to happen. We are going to be beggars, not choosers, okay? So we're not going to be able to just choose whatever game we want to get. We're going to have to take a look at the games that come our way and we're going to have to be thank you very much we appreciate that can you maybe give us a little something more i mean we are going to have to be pretty friendly to the stuff that's coming down the pipe because we're not in a situation where we can be greedy and where we can kick stuff to the curb and be like no i'm waiting for this more triple a experience if you're in the vr game in 2017, or if you were in the VR game 2016, of course you know this to be the case, this is a situation where you're going to have to be a little bit more lenient and you're gonna to have to understand that you are ahead of the curve, okay? You're ahead of everybody out there that's walking around. It's kinda, of, you know the way I would relate it is I had an HDTV back in 1999. The neighborhood that I was living in, I can tell you straight up that I was the first person probably in that entire zip code that had an HDTV. I was one of the very first people to ever have an HDTV. And it wasn't because I'm like wealthy and I had all this money to be able to buy an HDTV in 1999. What happened actually was there was a company that went out of business called Unity Motion, and they were doing like high definition satellite broadcast, and they sold a special high definition TV that you would buy, and you would get their satellite dish, and you'd get the TV, and you'd get a receiver. Well, this company went out of business really early in the HD in the HD TV game. Like they were way too early. They went out of business. 
this company came in and started liquidating all their inventory and basically to make a long story short i got this four thousand dollar hd tv for 800 bucks and this was in 1999 okay i saw the very first super bowl that was ever filmed in high definition i saw it on that unity motion 32 inch pitcher tube hd tv this thing was gigantic and it weighed like 300 pounds it was unbelievable but i saw the very first super bowl that was ever filmed in high definition it was the st louis rams against the tennessee titans and i watched that super bowl on that hd tv i played my dreamcast on that hd tv i had a little vga box for my dreamcast got a really good video signal it looked beautiful some of those games like jet set radio widescreen and 480p looked absolutely beautiful on that hd hd tv but basically what i'm talking about here is i was an extremely early adopter for hd tvs and i was way before the curve i had an hd tv before you really needed to have an HD TV, way too early, really. There was hardly anything that I could watch in HD TV. Um, there really wasn't anything. I had to get a Direct TV dish, and 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 they had like a couple of channels where they showed little demonstrations. But it was there was really no need to own an HD TV that early. It took a long time for it to actually get acceptance in the marketplace and for more people to buy them and then for them to decide to have more high definition content. And now HD TVs are just a normal thing, but I was way ahead of the curve. And the point I'm trying to illustrate is that with our VR headsets, that's kind of the same thing. We are way ahead of the curve over the average person out there walking on the street that doesn't have a VR headset, doesn't know anything about a VR headset. We're way ahead of the curve. We're kind of like the people that had the very first cell phones. Remember the very first cell phones where it was this big, gigantic ass battery pack thing that somebody had on their side and they had a big phone that connected to it. And you basically had to have a, a thing over your shoulder to carry it. It was huge. That's kind of what we are. We're pioneers and it's, it's so early in the virtual reality game that basically what I'm trying to say is Patience is a virtue. We're going to have to be patient. We're going to have to be calm. We're going to have to let them bring the games out. Let's try to support the good games. If there are some good VR games, we got to buy them. We got to support them. We got to buy the good games. The bad games, okay, I'm not going to ask you to buy the bad games, but we got to continue to buy games. We got to support this ecosystem. We're very early on. These, we're in the Atari 2600 days. We haven't gotten to ColecoVision and Intellivision, and we're nowhere near the Nintendo Entertainment System. So we're very, very early on in the life cycle of virtual reality, and basically, the, the point I'm trying to make is this is going to be a slow burn and we're going to have to be uh, less choosy and more baggy. You know, we are beggars. We're not choosers. We're going to have to accept the stuff that comes down the pipe. I go back to the PlayStation VR launch. I truly feel that the PlayStation VR launch is one of the best launches that we've seen probably since November 2005 when the Xbox 360 launched. The PlayStation VR launch is incredible. You have stuff like Drive Club, you have stuff like Rigs, you have Rush of Blood, you have Thumper, you have Rez, you have Super Hypercube, uh, you have Battlezone, you have Batman. I mean, there were so many games. The thing is, is that some people are like, well, yeah, there's all these games, but that's not really my genre. That's not really my genre. I don't like racing games. I don't want to do a roller coaster game like Rush of Blood. I don't like racing games, so I don't want Drive Club. I don't like online games, so I don't want to play rigs. So everybody's trying to be really particular about it and try to be picky and choosy and choosy. And I'm saying no. If you're early on in the days of VR, you're going to have to be a little bit more of... Um, open-minded basically you're going to have to be open-minded you're going to have to try some of these games that are off the beaten trail 
stuff like Wayward Sky, stuff like Super Hypercube, stuff like Res Infinite, stuff like Thumper, stuff that you might not normally buy, you're going to have to buy if you really want to support this VR ecosystem and make it happen because we're not going to get games in all our favorite categories right away. And sometimes the first game that we get in the particular category is going to be a very amateur effort and it's going to be at a very low level. A lot of people want a great role-playing game in VR, and we have Vanishing Realms. And some people complain about Vanishing Realms, and they're like, it's so generic, it's so simple, it's so basic. I think Vanishing Realms is incredible. I personally had Vanishing Realms as my number one VR game of 2016. I think it's an amazing game because it puts you into that world. You're walking through the dungeon. You have a sword in one hand. You have a, a torch in the other hand. And you're lighting up the hallways and, and you're, you're battling the skeletons. I think it's an incredible game. Yes. Is it generic? Absolutely. Is it very much a first effort and d lacks depth and doesn't have a, a great story? Yeah, all of that. But you know what? We can't be choosers, we're beggars. We gotta take everything that these devs give us, the good games, and let's appreciate these good games. Let's reward these developers that are doing great things. Let's buy their stuff and let's tell other people about the good games. Um, avoid the bad games, but again, basically this is just a public service announcement. If you're gonna jump on the VR bandwagon, please understand that this is going to be a long haul. This is going to be a slow burn. But I think if we stick with it, if we stick with it, we weather the storm, there are going to be some droughts. There are going to be some game droughts where maybe three months go by and we really don't have shit to show for it for the three months that went by. That's going to happen. But there are going to be some incredible games that are going to come down the pipe. Let's remember, Fallout 4 VR is still coming sometime this year. Possibly one of the three Valve VR games could be coming later this year. And that's on the P... And then, of course, Oculus. I mean, don't even get me started on Oculus. Oculus has Robo Recall, Lone Echo, Artica 1. I don't know if all of those games are coming this year. Robo Recall definitely is coming, and maybe one of those other ones. Oculus has some incredible stuff that's coming later this year. And PlayStation VR, we still have Farpoint, and you know Sony is going to announce a lot of interesting things at the E3 show, possibly even at GDC coming up any day now. So um, basically, there is going to be great stuff that's going to come, but we're going to have to be a little bit more accepting, a little bit more open willing to try games that maybe aren't in our chosen genre, but you know what? Let's give it a try. And that's what I've been doing. I've been trying a lot of games that are a little bit out of my wheelhouse, and I've been enjoying some of this stuff. You know, Thumper is a game I would never play. I played it and I had a blast with it. Rush of Blood is not my normal type of game. Played it. It's one of my favorite it's my favorite PlayStation VR game of 2016. So there's a lot of stuff that's off the beaten trail that we can really enjoy. I say open up, try these new experiences, but understand it will be a slow burn and it will be a long haul. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for this installment of VR Roundtable Deep Dives, and I'll see you guys on the next installment. Take it easy. Later. Mm -hmm.